Greetings everybody, welcome back to Weekly Wildlife Wisdom. And so far I've been your host, Zero Yeti. Without further ado, let's get into it with the first animal of the week being Procavia capensis, better known as the Rock Hyrax, the Daisy, the Dupe, the Cape Hyrax, the Rock Rabbit, or the Coney. It is one of five living species in the order Hyracioidea, which is a group of small tusked Afrotherian mammals, which are relatives to elephants, manatees, and aardvarks. Rock hyraxes have a wide distribution throughout the Middle East and Sub Saharan Africa, where they prefer to dwell in rockier, uh, drier, typically alpine areas up to 13,800 feet or 4,200 meters in elevation. These social creatures live in egalitarian mixed sex colonies of 10 to up to 80 individuals, which form around crevasses, caverns, and complex burrows. Having incomplete thermal regulation, they are most active in the morning and evening and are well known to sunbathe to help uh, regulate their body temperature and warm themselves. Uh, they forage around as a group, feeding on a plethora of vegetation as well as the occasional grub or insect. They rarely drink water, as they get most of the moisture they need from their food. Uh, though they employ the use of sin trees, rock hyraxes are known to feed in a circular formation, with their head pointing to the outside of the circle to keep a eye out for predators, such as leopards, hyenas, jackals, servals, pythons, caracals, cobras, adders, hawks, wild dogs, and in particular, Varanexes and black eagles. Uh, when a predator is spotted, a hyrax will shriek in alarm and run for cover, and if need be, a hyrax will wedge itself backward between rocks and bite savagely at intruders with its long, sharp incisors. Apologies if you can hear the train in the background. Uh, reaching around 20 inches or 50 centimeters in length and around 8.8 .8 pounds or 4 kilo not kilometers, kilograms in weight, Rock hyraxes will sport a squat, heavily built body covered in thick fur, which may range from light gray to sandy orange to deep dark brown in coloration. The rock hyrax has a pointed head and a short neck with rounded ears and long black whiskers. After a 6 to 7 month pregnancy, a mother hyrax will give birth to 2 to 4 babies, which start eating solid food at around 2 weeks of age and are fully weaned by 10 weeks. Under ideal conditions, a rock hyrax will reach sexual maturity around 16 months of age and may have upwards of 10 years. Next up, we have Andidas lugobris, better known as the arboreal salamander. It is a species of climbing salamander native to the U.S. state of California and the Baja Peninsula of Mexico. These primarily nocturnal amphibians tend to inhabit thick chaparral shrubland and oak, sycamore, sequoia, and redwood-dominated forests. These amphibians spend their days hiding in moist tree hollows, leaf litter, root bundles, rodent burrows, or cracks and holes in rocks, emerging at night to hunt insects and other invertebrates. Uh, these, they are moderately social amphibians, which may share their hidey holes with as many as ten other salamanders and communicate with one another by barking. As the name suggests, arboreal salamanders are excellent climbers, sporting large feet with strong, elongated toes and a prehensile tail. They are known to jump between branches, angling their limbs and tail to act as parachutes, which help them glide. Reaching around 4 to, se four to 7 inches, or 10 to 18 centimeters in length, the arboreal salamander sports a broad, triangular head, Packed with an unusual with an unusual amount of long and sharp teeth for an amphibian. The coloration is dark brownish purple to gray, with a yellowish or whitish spot that varies between populations, and in some cases the spots are absent. The underside is a solid cream color typically, and the breeding season occurs from late spring to early summer. After mating, a female lays 12 to 24 eggs in a moist, hollowed area, such as a rotten log or tree hollow, where she will care for them until they hatch some three to four months later. Under ideal conditions, an arboreal salamander may reach sexual maturity around 2.5 years of age and may live upwards of 10. Uh, next up is 
Balina mysticetus, better known as the bowhead whale, the Greenland right whale, the Arctic whale, the steepletop, or the polar whale, is a species of baleen whale belonging to the family Baleenidae and is the only representative of the genus Balena. They are endemic to the Arctic, far north Atlantic, and far north Pacific Oceans, particularly the waters of the Hudson and Baffin Bays, Okhost, Salvard Barnets, Bering, Chukchi, and Beaufort Seas. These slow moving filter feeding giants definitely live alone or in pods of up to 10 individuals, diving up to 500 feet or 150 meters in search of food such as small fish, krill, and plankton. Bowheads are preyed upon by killer whales and various indigenous peoples of the Arctic. Reaching around 50 to 60 feet or 15 to 18 meters in length, and 120 to 160,000 pounds in weight, or 54,430 to 72,575 kilograms in weight. With females being larger than males, the bowhead ranks amongst the largest whales in terms of mass. Bowhead is named after its characteristic massive triangular sh- skull, which is the which houses the largest mouth of any animal representing one-third of the animal's total body length. Said mouths are lined with massive baleen plates, which reach up to 13 feet or 4 meters long. Bowheads utilize their massive heads, which are protected by nearly 20 inches or 50 centimeters of thick blubber, to break through sea ice in order to breathe. Because of this, during the winter, bowheads are often accompanied by belugas and narwhals, who rely on their breathing holes created by the behemoths. Uh, Bowheads sport large, robust, dark-colored bodies and white chins and lack a dorsal fin. Breeding occurs from March to August, where receptive bowheads will form mated pairs or groups and serenade one another with long, complex, variable songs. After a 13 to 14 month pregnancy, a mother bowhead will give birth to a single calf, which stays with her for one to three years. Under ideal conditions, a bowhead whale will reach sexual maturity around 25 years of age and live upwards of 250, ranking them amongst the longest lived animals and the longest lived mammal. And then we have Dasurus uh, maculatis, better known as the tiger quoll, the spotted tail quoll, the spotted quoll, the spotted tail dasur, or the native cat or the tiger cat. It is a carnivorous marsupial native to eastern and southern Australia and the island of Tasmania. These semi arboreal mammals can be found in a variety of habitats, including mixed dry and alpine forests, as well as pasture land and grassland. But they tend to prefer wetter environments such as riverine forests, rainforests, and closed eucalypt forest. Tiger quolls are generally nocturnal, spending their days in dens where they build in burrows, caves, rock crevices, tree hollows, hollow logs, or abandoned buildings. They emerge at night to hunt prey such as insects, crustaceans, lizards, snakes, frogs, birds, platypus, echidnas, rabbits, possums, couscouses, gliders, bandicoots, padmelons, small wallabies, and wombats. Tiger quolls are themselves preyed upon by Tasmanian devils, masked owls, dingoes, large pythons, and wedge-tailed eagles. Reaching around 27 to 45 centimeters, not centimeters, inches, or 69 to 113 centimeters in length, and 3 to 15 pounds, or 1.3 to 7 kilograms in weight, females tend to be a fair bit smaller than males. Uh, The tiger quoll is the second largest carnivorous marsupial on Earth after the Tasmanian devil. At 308 newtons, the tiger quoll also sports the second most powerful bite relative to body size of any living mammal after the Tasmanian devil. The tiger quoll has a relatively short has relatively short legs, a tail as long as the rest of its body, a thick neck, and a large head with an elongated, rounded snout. Each foot has five toes with pink foot pads that are ridged, uh, which help the animal climb. Uh, the fur is typically reddish brown or occasionally black with a creamy white colored underside. 
Mating occurs from April to July, and the gestation period of the species lasts for 21 days, yielding around 5 babies on average. The babies then move to the pouch of the mother, where they continue to grow for the following for another following 12 weeks. Um, the young become fully independent by 18 to 21 weeks of age, and reach sexual maturity around one year, and they may live up to seven. Next up is Evania appendagaster, better known as the blue-eyed ensign wasp. It is a species of wasp in the family Evanidae, which is which was originally native to southern Asia, but has spread throughout much of the world's tropics, subtropics, and temperate regions, and can now be found on every continent barring Antarctica. With adults reaching upwards of 0.6 inches or 15 millimeters in total length, it is one of the larger ensign wasps and can be distinguished from other species by the wide separation of the first and second sections of the coxa, the segment of the leg that attaches to the body. It sports large wings, and its body is black in color, in color with contrasting blue eyes. The abdominal petiole, or which is the constricted stalk that holds the posterior section of the abdomen or gaster, is attached high on the body. The gaster is laterally compressed in an oval to nearly triangular in shape, held in a flag-like fashion resembling an ensign, hence the common name. The species reproduces by laying its eggs into the egg cases or uthake, or uthase of cockroaches. The mother wasp sneaks into a cockroach nest and, upon finding the eggs, drills a hole into them with her ovipositor and lays a single one of her eggs inside of each of the cockroach egg capsules. The wasp eggs then hatch and, are, and their larvae feed upon the cockroach larvae growing and developing through five instars and emerging from a now empty egg capsule as an adult. As adults, blue ensign wasps feed primarily upon plants such as parsley and fennel and move up to three weeks. Next up is Bubu, Bubo virginianus, better known as the great horned owl, the tiger owl, the winged tiger, the tiger of the air, or the hoot owl, is a species of large owl native to the Americas, where it is found from the subarctic of Canada down to the upland regions of Argentina, Bolivia, and Peru. However, they range in Central Amer- their range in Central America is very fragmented. They are remarkably adaptable birds, which inhabit a range of habitats, including deciduous, carnivorous, and mixed temperate forests, as well as tropical rainforests, grasslands, mountains, deserts, and subarctic tundra, rocky coasts, mangrove swamps, and urban areas. Their preferred prey of choice tends to be hares and rabbits, particularly cottontails. However, they are also known to eat invertebrates, amphibians, fish, shrews, lizards, snakes, young turtles and crocodilians, rodents, bats, marsupials, armadillos, ringtails, monkeys, mustelids, foxes, coyotes, small dogs, small felines, moles, and other birds, particularly grouse, pheasant, crows, ravens, hawks, falcons, other owls, and waterfowl. Great horned owls are themselves preyed upon by raccoons, wolverines, red-tailed hawks, goshawks, and snowy owls. Additionally, many species such as crows, ravens, jays, hawks, kestrels, and falcons will often attempt to mob great horned, mob great horned owls, wherein large groups of these other birds come together to either drive off or outright kill the great horned owl. Reaching 17 to 25 inches or 43 to 64 centimeters in length, 2.7 to 5.5 pounds or 1.2 to 2.5 kilograms in weight, and 3 to, fi- 3 to 5 or 91 to 153 centimeters uh, wide wingspan, with females being slightly larger than males, the great horned owl is the second largest owl in the Americas after the snowy owl. The great horned owl is generally colored for camouflage with a mixture of browns and grays. The underparts are usually light with some brown-black horizontal barring, and they have a distinctive white spot on their throat. Uh, Like their common name suggests, they have distinctive horn-like feather tufts at the tops of their heads, and they have a rounded facial structure which allows for forward-facing yellow eyes that have binocular vision. 
Reed horned owls do not build their own nests, but rather they find an abandoned nest from a rodent or another large bird and take it over. Here, a female will lay one to six eggs, which they are incubated in shifts by both parents for around 30 to 37 days. The chicks then fledge around six to nine weeks after hatching. In ideal conditions, the great horned owl reaches sexual maturity around one to three years of age and they live up to 50. And our extinct animal of the week is Dinornis, better known as the giant moa. It is a extinct genus of bird belonging to the moa family of the suborder Dinornithiformes, uh, a group of large flightless birds which lived on the islands of New Zealand some 2 million to 500 years ago. There are two currently recognized species, the North Island Giant Moa, or Dionis Novilla Zealandiidae, and the South Island Giant Kiwi, Giant Moa, not Kiwi, Dionis Robustus. These diurnal avians tend to be found in the lowlands of their island homes and having shrublands, grasslands, coastlands, and forests. Or they occupied the niche of large terrestrial browsing herbivore, similar to certain antelope, bovine, cervids, and giraffes of today, feeding upon twigs, seeds, berries, leaves, flowers, fungi, vines, herbs, and shrubs. In life, giant moas displayed a large degree of sexual dimorphism, whereby the females were up to twice the size of the males, with males reaching around 5 to 6.5 feet, or 1.52 to 1.98 meters in height, and around 120 to 200 pounds, or 55 to 90 kilograms in weight. The females reached roughly 10 to 12.5 feet, or 3.05 to 3.81 meters in height, and around 170 to 550 pounds, or 78 to 250 kilograms in weight. These birds were amongst the largest to ever exist, with the North Island Giant Moa currently holding the record of the tallest bird ever, and the South Island Giant Moa being the second tallest. However, both are beaten in terms of weight by their fellow recently extinct ratite, the Elephant Bird of New Zealand. Dionis had long, slim, elongated bones compared to other moa species, and Maori historical accounts describe the animals as tall, two-legged, tailless, wingless giants with slender necks. They sported brown, slightly straight, downy, wool-like feathers that covered all of their bodies, sands their heads, feet, and part of the neck. It is believed that the settlement of New Zealand by the Maori directly led to the moa's extinction, as they were essentially hunted for their meat and feathers. What's possibly more devastating was the introduction of Polynesian rats and dogs, which likely destroyed moa nests and killed moa chicks faster than these large birds could mature and reproduce. The last of the giant moa likely died out around 1500 CE, with the last species of smaller moa, the upland moa, possibly holding out until the 1800s. As always, take care to my guys, gals, and my binary pals. Hope you have a wonderful day.